Hey guys, remember this little disco ball I made out of special poly panels that hold mirrors? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Child's play. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit bigger. Yes. <coughs> cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything, Devin here. And what I have in front of me here is just about 1,000 poly panels. And they were all printed with Filamentum's Vertigo Starlight Filament. They sent me a big batch and so immediately I started printing some big things. So these aren't just any poly panels, they are the special poly panels I made that hold one inch mirror tiles. Got a thousand of those too. And uh, we're gonna combine them, glue them together, and then stick together all those poly panels to make a larger disco ball than that last one. I have a bit of a mock-up right here. This I just made with random poly panels, but you can see the general look that I'm going for. It's, a, it's kind of the standard size for a disco ball, but it's got extra spikes and facets on it. And it's made of poly panels and it's 3D printed. So I think it'll be pretty cool. I'm on a bit of a time crunch, and as you can imagine, it took a while to print all of these. So we're just gonna get straight into this, start gluing in our mirrors, and building our super cool poly panel disco ball. Let's get to it. Let's actually jump back a bit to talk about the printing process, because it was quite a feat. Like I said, everything was printed with this beautiful Vertigo Starlight PLA filament. But the real star of the show has to be the Anycubic Chiron printer that I used to print most of these parts, because this thing was an absolute workhorse. I didn't have much time to print these hundreds and hundreds of panels, so I had this printer going day in, day out, for at least 18 hours a day, and it just continued to deliver fantastic parts. As you'll notice here, I'm using the sequential printing feature in Simplify 3D to print the parts one at a time, instead of printing all of the pieces at the same time, which would increase the likelihood of failure. But this way it prints one and then moves on to the next. That allowed me to use the entire 400 by 400 millimeter area of this printer's build plate. And if one piece were to fail, it wouldn't destroy the rest of the print. It didn't fail very often. There might've been one or two times that a panel didn't stick down completely, but overall, it was just a breeze to work with. I also printed several panels on Creality's CR10S Pro, although that one wasn't quite as reliable. Nevertheless, between these two printers, I was able to print out the 900 triangles and 100 square poly panels that I needed for this project. From there, it was just a matter of gluing in the mirrors. Luckily, I was able to find a seller on Amazon that provides these mirrors that are already cut to triangles and squares with one inch side lengths. So I didn't have to worry about that. And I actually used these mirrors to design the disco poly panels that I made. So if you wanna make these yourself, you can check the link in the description of this video. Originally, these panels had little clips to snap the mirrors into place, but it sometimes chipped the mirrors. And I wanted to glue things into place anyways, just so that they were sturdy. So I ended up going with just a loose fit that's held in place by the glue. You'll notice those pockets in the corner and I'll make sure to fill those with E6000 as well as just sealing the edges. And there we go, that's one disco poly panel. Now we just have to make a lot more. Even with Natalie's help, this took maybe three or four hours of continuous gluing. And you know I wanted to get this cool time lapse so I had to do it in one sitting. It is a cool time lapse though. Oh man, I'm so glad to be done with that. Not the most enjoyable activity, not the best way to spend my time, but I think it's gonna be pretty satisfying in about 48 hours to flip all of these over and see all those beautiful mirrors again. And uh, well, by then we're gonna be on the road, so I'm gonna have to take these with me and assemble them in a better location. Ah, here we are, the great outdoors. While E6000 does take 72 hours to reach full strength, 
I was able to start assembling pieces within about 24 hours. I just had to make sure I was connecting the pieces by pressing on the outside of the panels rather than pressing the mirrors in. And that worked pretty well. I started out by creating this little three-sided pyramid and then I attached more triangles to each of those edges and if you lay those flat like this, you're basically creating a larger triangle piece. If I connect three of those, we get this fancy spiky triangle pyramid. If we look at the connectors at the bottom of both of these pyramids, you'll notice they form triangles themselves. And this is kind of a fractal quality of these poly panels. So here's a tetrahedron that I made using four of those larger spiky triangle pyramids. And that already makes something totally wild. I got really excited by this realization, so I decided to scrap the giant disco ball and instead make a bunch of different shapes using this same concept. Here you can see me connecting those little triangle pyramids in the formation of an icosahedron, and that creates this really cool stellated icosahedron. You can also make a pyramid out of four triangles to create this square base, and by connecting those in the formation of a cube, I created a stellated cube which looks completely different. Add one more triangle to the mix and you've got this pentagon base. And using that, I was able to create probably the most requested polyhedron, this rhombicosidodecahedron. I think you guys just wanted it because of the name, but it ended up being really cool. And that's kind of the largest disco ball I made. I also created this special hanger that goes inside so that the weight of the disco ball is spread across several poly panels. I'll just leave that on the inside, and then I'll close up this shape a little bit more, leaving just that one pentagon at the top, so that I can hang it from there, and it also spins, which is pretty cool. Before we finish up these awesome disco polyhedra, I want to take a second to talk about our sponsor, Honey. Goes great on toast. Honey is also a super handy extension for your web browser that makes sure you're always getting the best deals online. Nobody wants to spend more money than they have to, but keeping track of every deal and searching for coupon codes that aren't expired also sucks. But Honey automates that whole process so you can save both your precious time and money. Honey's great for everyone because it works on over 37,000 sites like Amazon and Newegg. You can save some serious money on big purchases, but even with little things, it's totally worth it. The other day I ordered some photos from Walgreens and I got 30% off, which amounted to like 33 cents, but it didn't take me any extra time, so why would I turn down free money? Getting started is super easy. Just visit joinhoney.com slash make anything, and it takes two clicks to install. Boom, boom, you're saving money. And don't worry, Honey isn't selling your shopping history or your data. They get paid simply for encouraging you to shop online with confidence. Over 10 million people are already saving money with Honey because there's no reason not to. It's free to use, it's easy to install, two clicks. So start shopping with confidence. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash make anything. That's joinhoney.com slash make anything. Honey, the smart shopping assistant that saves you time and money when you're shopping online. All right, now it's time to hang these things up. And I actually didn't create special connectors for most of these since I wasn't planning to make this many, but it was easy enough to just feed some twine through the holes between the panels, tie that off and hang them up that way. I'm definitely not a master of knots. I just did a couple overhand knots and that seemed to do the trick. On the other end of the rope, I just tied this large loop that's large enough to fit the entire disco ball through it. This way you can just feed the rope over a pole, put the disco ball through that loop, and then let it hang. This works great because it's very simple and reliable, and it's also very easy to undo by simply reversing the process, pulling the disco panel back through the loop and taking it down. It was important to make this process easy because I'm hanging these up on a temporary structure, and that involved a lot of climbing. This awesome geodesic dome was made by some friends of mine, and they build this temporary structure every year for this gathering of friends that we have called Moonbase. This is one of several structures, and this one in particular is kind of our relaxation space, as you can tell by all the hammocks and lazy creatures. 
I thought this would be the perfect place to hang up these panels because there's so many colors all around that get caught on the mirrors, and I just think it suits the meditative and kind of reflective quality of this space. They really did fit in. This is just an awesome environment for hanging these things up. Although it did get a little bit windy at times. <laughs> but you know what? That showed that these panels can handle a bit of a beating. Yeah, that was just so cool. I couldn't think of a better place to showcase these panels. By the way, some of these triangles had a bit of residue on them from the way that they were packaged, and I found that a little bit of isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip can easily clean that up. Also, a microfiber cloth is really good for keeping the mirrors clean. By the way, the reason you didn't see this one in the fishbowl is because this was hanging in the dancing dome, and I was too busy dancing to actually film that. But I was curious what this would look like if I filled it with lights. So I got these battery-powered Christmas lights and just stuffed this whole thing inside of the poly panel, followed by the hanger, and then I closed it up. Now we've got a disco polyhedron that reflects light and creates its own light as well. That's something interesting to experiment with. Wow, what a project this has been. I mean, starting out, it was tough. Printing out all those poly panels, gluing in hundreds upon hundreds of mirrors, totally exhausting. But you know, now that I have all these in front of me, I'll say it was completely worth it because these things are awesome. And I know we didn't go according to plan 100%. We didn't make that single giant poly panel disco ball, but I'm actually glad that I ended up going in this direction because it gave me a much better opportunity to experiment and figure out what kinds of different crazy shapes I can make with just these triangle and square poly panels. What's great is I can now take everything I learned from making these and combine them to make super crazy, super giant disco poly panel polyhedra. If you guys can convince me to glue in that many mirrors. I'm gonna need a lot of likes on this video. <laughs> ah, but seriously, it's crazy. Every time I make something with poly panels, it just gives me more ideas. It just makes me realize how truly infinite the possibilities are. So much, there's just so much that can be done here. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more like this project, be sure to like this video. And you know, also leave a comment if you have ideas for other materials I could use, other shapes you'd want to see, or just something completely different. I want to hear it. But that's it for today's video, so until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.